Here's a question from Lisa Luck. She asks, and this is a question I'd like to know too, how long can a woman safely be on HRT with put, without putting herself at a higher cancer risk? My doctor suggested I go off them after five years and I miss them so much. I hear you, Lisa. Um, there are so many mixed messages about this. Thank you. So there are mixed messages. And again, the follow-up data to the WHI showed that whether or not someone was on estrogen and progesterone or estrogen alone, there was, there were, you looked 18 years out and the safety data was actually very good. There was no increased morbidity or mortality in either group. My feeling is if somebody is well, I will not take them off of hormones after five years. There are proven benefits. Now we're not supposed to say it, one uses hormones for primary disease prevention and the United States Preventive Service Task Force just came out with a statement stating that hormones are not for primary disease prevention, but we do know that hormones really do help keep a woman's cardiovascular risk low, particularly when the estrogen is used transdermally. And in addition, it helps bone, we know that it, that's very important and lowers one's risk of developing type two diabetes. So I really feel strongly that the use of menopause hormone therapies absolutely has to be individualized. And we it's something I discuss with my patients annually. And if someone should develop a contraindication or a reason why they can't be on hormones, I will take them off of them. I try to really shift my patients, particularly as they're getting into their 60s, if they've been on an oral formulation, to consider transdermal estradiol because it really has a safer profile. We don't have to worry about changes in lipid profiles. We don't have to worry about clotting. So it's very that data is really, really reassuring. But when I have patients on hormones, I do not have an endpoint in mind. And that rule about five years is passe, if you will. So perhaps Lisa should talk to her doctor or change doctors um, if she wants to stay on hormones. And I was going to say, there are a lot of other advantages to hormone therapy, um, and maybe they're more superficial, but estrogen helps your skin. It helps you be more clear thinking. It helps with brain fog. It helps with hair. I mean, estrogen is kind of a wonder hormone, if you ask me. I, I agree, and it's very interesting. Certainly when I trained and earlier on in my career, we weren't really supposed to talk about those things or have that factor into the discussion we would have with our patients in terms of why someone should go on hormones. But quite honestly, the discussion of hormones has to do with the quali quality of life and it has to do with sexual function, cognitive function, sleep, and it's an overall sense of well-being. You know, we know that obviously we want to take care of our bones and our muscles and our joints. And it's very interesting because many women start to have joint aches and pains with menopause. You hear of so many women having frozen shoulders. It's not, it's not a coincidence. So I think, yes, there's so many benefits that go beyond vasomotor symptoms, yet the FDA approves hormones for vasomotor symptoms, also for maintaining bones and preventing osteoporosis, not for treating osteoporosis, but from preventing further bone loss. So the way I would look at it is, and the same thing when I would speak to my obstetric patients, hormones affect every single organ system of the body. And it's really true. We could walk through every organ system of the body and talk about the benefits of being on hormones. But then again, not everyone wants to and not everyone can be. So it clearly has to be individualized and it's not one size fits all medicine. We have a whole array of options and what works for one patient may not work for another. And what works for a woman who is newly menopausal may not work for somebody who is in her sixties. Chris asks, wondering if Dr. B has any advice on the pros, cons or risk benefits to a woman beginning HRT after being in menopause for 10 plus years. I can't seem to get an answer on this. I know there are many benefits for HRT for brain, heart, and bone health. If there's no family history, no family cancer history, does it make sense to begin HRT? That's a really, really, really great, great question. The current um, prevailing philosophy regarding starting and initiating hormone therapy is we want to start it within 10 years of final period and before the age of 60. And it's really unfortunate because in my practice, I have 60 year olds coming in and say, oh my gosh, I missed the boat. I can't believe it. And I've, in my practice, I've made a few exceptions to the rule. 
if I have somebody who's just 60 or just 61 and they recently went through menopause and they are healthy as can be, their cholesterol is fine, their blood pressure is fine, we'll look at their bones and we will have a discussion, again, weighing the risks and the benefits. But as a rule of thumb, if somebody is 10 years out, I won't. Now, what is interesting is unfortunately, many young women who went through very early menopause, well before the age of 40, who were not offered hormones, the question frequently comes up in my meetings, you know, can you then give a woman hormones? And it certainly is up for discussion. We know when, if you were to take a 35 year old, for example, who was treated for a certain type of cancer or for whatever reason, you know, an early ovarian insufficiency situation, if, if you were to offer them hormones at the beginning, they keep their risk of cardiovascular disease low. They lower the risk of osteoporosis. These women who go through an earlier menopause are at increased risk of cardiovascular disease and are at an increased risk of bone loss. So the question is always, well, if they come to you at 45, is it too late? We have to weigh the pros and the cons. And I would certainly consider the pros in a younger woman. If a woman comes to me in her 60s and is well beyond her final period, we typically don't do that. Is there anything else that this woman could do 10 years out from menopause that would mitigate some of the symptoms of, you know, that, that come from getting older and losing all your hormones? So if she were to still have vasomotor symptoms, which 10, 15% of women still do, there are non-hormonal ways in which we can address those symptoms. It doesn't seem to me that this woman has symptoms. I think she just is talking about the health benefits, brain, heart, and bone health. If she doesn't really qualify for HRT, are there things she can do that would benefit her brain, heart, and bone health? Yes, 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 yes. So there are absolutely non-hormonal things one could do, and one should be doing them even if one is on hormones. Being on hormones does not give one a pass in terms of taking care of their own health. So eating healthfully is so important and having a heart healthy diet, the Mediterranean diet, for example, very, very important. Also exercise, and it's just not cardio. A lot of women think cardio alone is sufficient. It really isn't, especially as we age we lose muscle with age. How much a year do you lose in, in muscle weight? Like a lot, right? Well, a decent amount. And I will tell you, I really try to emphasize to my patients, especially the young ones who are doing Pilates and yoga and, and resistance, resistance training. I'm like, keep doing it. It is so important. It's never too late to start.